You didn't toss me away, but you loved me at my worst. And you never need have come at all. Could I have loved you first? You died that someone might live. Is it I, Lord? We say thank you. Because the answer is yes. Bless us now as we turn our minds and our hearts towards these simple representations of your sacrifice. And bless us as we commune together. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you here for prayer? Father in heaven, thank you again for this service today. Lord, again, what a weight that's lifted off of our hearts and our minds, knowing that regardless of who we are, yes, you've died for me. In the past, a great, presented a great question. And Lord, again, it's so uplifting to know that it is me that you died for. The Bible says you died for the church and you love the world, Lord. But again, when we, once we truly understand your gospel and your word, you died for me. And I pray that we all can experience that, Lord, that individual love you have for us. 
that individual forgiveness, that individual blessing you have for each and every one of us here. And again, we thank you so much, Lord, for that wonderful, wonderful privilege and gift of your son who died on the cross. This bread, Lord, that we, that's going to be broken and representing your body, Lord, again, Lord, we, we accept and we thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you, Lord, again for hearing and answering our prayer. In your son's name I pray. Amen.
a reminder of Christ's second coming. As they were gathered about the table, he said tones in tones of touching sadness, Desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. But the communion service was not to be season of sorrowing. This was not its purpose. As the Lord's disciples gathered about his table, they are not to remember and lament their shortcomings. They are not to dwell upon their past religious experience, whether that experience has been elevating or depressing. They are not to recall the differences between them and their brethren. The preparatory service has embraced all this. The self-examination, the confession of sin, the reconciliating of differences has all been done. Now they come to meet with Christ. They are not to stand in the shadow of the cross, but in its saving light. They are to open the soul to the bright beams of the sun of righteousness, with hearts cleansed by Christ's most precious blood and full consciousness of his presence. Although unseen, they are here to hear his words. Peace, peace I, I leave, leave with, with you. you. My peace, peace I, I give, give to you. Not, not as, as the world, world giveth, give, give I unto, unto you. As we receive the bread...
scriptures on the screen. Can we read together? Shall we pray? Most kind and loving Father, you shed your blood for us, Lord. And for this, we give you praise, Father. Father, help us never to forget the price that you paid on Calvary's cross for our sins. Lord, you were nailed inside of your hands. Lord, for this, we give you all praise. Bless this as we partake, Lord, that we will never forget the price that you pray because we love you, Lord Jesus. And if we do not know how to love you, teach us, Lord, how to love you. We ask that this in your name we do pray. Amen. As we receive the bread and wine symbolizing Christ's broken body and spilled blood, we in imagination join in the scene of communion in the upper chamber. We seem to be passing through the garden, consecrating, consecrated by the agony of him who bore his sin, who bore the sins of the world. The witness, the struggle by which our Reconciliation with God was obtained. Christ is set forth, crucified among us. Looking upon the crucified Redeemer, we more fully comprehend the magnitude and meaning of the sacrifice made by the majesty of heaven. The plan of salvation is glorified before us, and the thought of Calvary awakens living and sacred emotions in our hearts. <coughs> Praise to God and the Lamb will be in our hearts and in our lips. For pride and self-worship cannot flourish in the soul that keeps fresh in memory the same Calvary. As faith contemplates, contemplates our Lord's great sacrifice, the soul assimilates the spiritual life of Christ. That soul will receive spiritual strength from every communion. The service forms a living connection by which the deliverer Believer is bound up with Christ and thus bound up with the Father. In a special sense, 
It forms a connection between dependent human beings and God. The communion service points to Christ's second coming. It is designed to keep this hope vivid in the minds of the, of the disciples. Whenever they meet together, commemorate his death, to commemorate his death, they recount how he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But as I, as I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth for this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. In their tribulation, they found comfort in the hope of their Lord's return. Unspeakably precious to them was the thought, as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. These are the things we are never to forget. The love of Jesus, with its con constraining power, is to be kept fresh in our memory. Christ has instituted this service that it may speak to our senses of the love of God that has been expressed in our behalf. There can be no union between our souls and God except for through Christ. The union and love between brother and brother must be cemented and rendered eternal by the love of Jesus. And nothing less than the death of Christ could make us love effectus for us. It is only because of his death that we can look with joy to his second coming. His sacrifice is the center of our hope. Upon this, we must fix our faith. together.
This evening we're going to go about the benevolent fund a little bit differently. The deacons will be serving you. If the deacons will rise. seat. Bow your heads with me as we pray. Dear Father, little in your hands does much. You have proven that. And we commend this offering to those, Father God, that are less fortunate than ourselves who are in need. Father God, we thank you for being able to give. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, we come to the end of another communion service. <clears throat> As always, our hearts are thankful. We're grateful to be forgiven, grateful to be God's child. Amen? Who says amen? Amen. Sure is good to see Sister Thomas out tonight. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Thomas. So glad you felt well enough to come. Amen. Man, would you encourage uh, John Anthony and Kennedy for? Amen. Amen. We appreciate them so very much. Thank our musicians for uh, for standing by as well. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So we want you to be back in the morning. About, just about 12 hours from now. Um, so let's stand to our feet, shall we? First Peter's a wonderful book. I hope you're getting 
blessing out of it. It's one of my favorite books of Scripture. We won't dismiss with um, with a benediction, but we'll dismiss um, as they did on that fateful Thursday night. They uh, left each other with a hymn. It says as they went out to the uh, to the Mount of Olives. Let's sing together. Hark! The herald angels sing. Jesus, the light of the world. Amen. Be sure to greet your brother and sister on your way out. We look forward to seeing you bright and early in the morning.